Let us go to God in a word of prayer and a word of thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to receive your word. I pray today that your people will hear your word. God, speak through me today and hide me behind your cross. We pray that you would just speak again to minds, to hearts, and to souls today. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. So heal us today with your word. We love you. We thank you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's followers said, amen. Amen. Today I just want to speak from the subject of seeking God for a breakthrough. Seeking God for a breakthrough. Is anybody in this place that needs a breakthrough? Just say amen. Amen. You know, a number of years ago, my wife and I wanted to do some remodeling to our home. And so what we did is we attempted to hire someone to help us to figure it out. You know, it was a pretty neat experience. The remodeler had basically drew us some pictures of what our house would look like on the inside and and showed us samples of the paint that would be on the walls and gave us pictures of what our cabinets would look like and countertops and carpet and all the things, the flooring. It, it, it was a sight to see how beautiful things would look like if we allowed her to just change things up just a little bit. You know, in fact, we, go, we got so excited when we saw the pictures that she drew up, we forgot about the process and the amount of money that it would take to get things done. To remodel the kitchen, what had to happen? Stuff had to be tore down and tore up. All throughout the house, it was going to be a mess. And so when we finally agreed on what we were going to get done, we were wondering what we actually had gotten ourselves into. Things got so bad at some point that we had to move in with our parents to get away from the dust and the dirt. The floor got tore up, there was no kitchen for a minute, appliances were gone, and and walls were in shambles. Things just got unbearable, and so we had to stay away. We couldn't take all the things that were going on in the house. But what we realized after going through all this mess is that we couldn't have a nicer and newer home if old stuff wasn't torn down and torn up. See, that's just like life. Many people want God to give them a new life and a new job and more money and a better situation, but they don't want him to touch anything. If I had told my remodeler that I didn't want her to touch anything, she would have told me that I I must not have wanted anything done to make my house look better. If I wanted new paint, if I wanted new flooring, if I wanted new cabinets, if I wanted to upgrade some appliances, none of that would have been possible if the old stuff wasn't taken out and torn down first. See, what I'm trying to say to you on this morning is that there are going to be times in your life when you've got to trust God and give him permission to tear things up so that he can make all things new. See, that's the only way that you can get to a breakthrough in your life. So what is a breakthrough? What is a breakthrough? The definition of a breakthrough is a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. It's an instantaneous success in a particular activity. Think about it. I want to ask you the question, are you facing a difficult or even impossible situation right now? Perhaps you're facing a major barrier and you feel stuck. Perhaps you need something to turn around in your life. Perhaps there's something that you need to stop doing. Perhaps there's someone that you need to get away from. Can I get an amen? Perhaps there's something that you need to get started. No matter where you are and and what you're going through, there's there's going to be some times where you need God to intervene in your life. And that's when you got to know the proper way to seek him for a breakthrough. See, if if you have your Bibles, again, indulge with me for a minute. And as we talked earlier in John chapter 8, verse 12, this text helps us to figure out what we need to do in order to get to our breakthrough. 
The Bible says this. The Bible says this. Repeat after me. Say, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. See, the text shows us this. The text shows us that breakthrough happens when you realize what's really important in life. Walking in the light. Walking in the light is important. The light of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Now, who is Jesus? He's the source of revelation. See, if you need something revealed in your life, Jesus is the source of of re re revelation. I remember someone was coming to me the other day and, and they were trying to make a decision about finding a mate and trying to figure out if they wanted to get married. The first thing I asked them is, did you consult Jesus? Did you talk to the Lord? I know you're talking to me. I know you're talking to family. I know you're talking to friends, but people mess up because they don't talk to the Lord. He is the source of revelation. And you know what also he is? He's the source of discernment for the exposure of truth. Yes. He's the source of discernment for the exposure of truth. See, somebody is looking for truth in the wrong places. Somebody is, is looking for truth from the wrong person. See, people will give you advice and turn around and, and, and go into the other direction. They'll later say, I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. And, and that, that's why we need to follow God when looking for the truth. Making major decisions, knowing the word of God makes it so much easier. See, many people can't get to success in their situation because they aren't following the light. The light. I am the light of the world. The Bible says, follow me and you won't walk in darkness. Matthew 6, 22 through 23, a great verse that I love. The, the voice version of the Bible says this, the eye is the lamp of the body. You draw light into your body through your eyes and the light shines out to the world through your eyes. So if your eye is well and shows you what is true, then your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is clouded or evil, then your body will be filled with evil and dark clouds. And the darkness that takes over the body of a child of God who has gone astray, that is the deepest, darkest darkness there is. Now what am I saying? I'm saying that if you don't realize that the most important thing in life is your relationship with God, and the most important thing in your life is that you keep him a priority in your life then the things that you uh, and the things that you put before him will basically keep you in darkness it'll keep you in despair and you'll walk around in circles getting nowhere wondering why things aren't working out See, things aren't working out because your eyes are on the wrong things, relying on the wrong things, putting your hope in the wrong things. See, breakthrough happens when you realize who is most important in your life. Now, another thing breakthrough happens through, breakthrough happens when you're focused on the right stuff. Somebody say the right stuff. Right. Remember this, when, you, when we focus, what we focus on, remember this, what we focus on and what we look at determines our direction and our thinking. What we focus on and what we look at determines our direction and our thinking. Your focus can determine your reality. Your focus, uh, if you focus on the outcomes, you've got to focus on the outcomes and not the obstacles. You've got to starve your distractions and feed your focus. What is the eye again? The Bible says this. It says it's the lamp of the body. So if we focus on good things, good things will come to you. If you focus on evil, bad stuff, bad stuff will come to you. If you focus on failure, failure finds a way of finding you. You focus on what people say, it tends to sound like the truth. You focus on what you don't have, you tend to feel like you're coming up short. We wonder why we can't get along with people. Anybody, anybody ever wonder why you can't get along with some people? We wonder why we can't get along with people. That's because that's we're watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. People wonder why families are fighting, and, 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 and that's because too many people are watching Empire. 
We don't look at, you know, like Bill Cosby. He was a father figure. Now people are looking at Lucius Lyon. And that's your father figure. And we wonder why families can't get along. We wonder why our homes are messed up. All you got to do is look on the DVR on somebody's TV for the answer. We wonder why we don't know how to respond to the challenges of life. All you got to do is look at the top five people, the top five recent calls in some people's phone, and you'll realize why their life is so messed up. Some of us need to think to ourselves. How can they tell me what I'm supposed to be doing when they're doing worse than me? You got to watch who you seek for guidance. Can I get an amen to that? Some folk are gatekeepers for the Grand Canyon. They just waiting at the entrance for you to fall into the ditch, down into the depths of destruction, right in a ditch, so they can look over the edge and shake their head. Breakthrough happens when you focus on the right stuff. Say right stuff. You know, sometimes things don't just happen in the way and in the timing that you want them to happen because we simply aren't ready for it. You know, if anyone has ever been to a real pizzeria, and I'm not talking about Pizza Hut or Papa John's, I'm talking about a real authentic place. The dough is the best for pizza at real pizzerias, and, and, and there's a reason for it. See, at a real pizzeria, the pizza dough goes through some major abuse before it's ready to turn into a delicious pizza. It's slammed down on the counter. It's treated rough. It's, it's smashed by a rolling pin and then it's flattened out. It's twirled around on a single finger and it's thrown up in the air spinning. See, most people aren't thinking about the process that it took to make a good pizza. They just wanted the good stuff. They just wanted the pepperoni and the sausage and the cheese and the sauce and the veggies. All the good stuff doesn't get put on the dough until it's ready to receive it. See, many people want to see the goodness of God, the power of God, or the blessing of God, and wondering why it's not happening the way they think it should. Maybe it's because God is trying to tell them that the dough is not quite ready to receive it. See, sometimes we aren't ready for the blessings of God to be fulfilled in our lives. Because number three, because receiving a breakthrough requires a certain type of behavior Matthew 5 14 through 16 if you're a note taker Matthew 5 14 through 16 says this and you beloved are the light of the world a city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden similarly it would be silly to light a lamp and then hide it under a bowl when someone lights a lamp he puts it on a table or a desk or a chair and the light illuminates the entire house the Bible says in verse 16, you are like that illuminating light. It says, let your light shine everywhere you go that you may illuminate creation. So men and women everywhere may see your good actions, may see creation at its fullest, may see your devotion to me, and may turn and praise your Father in heaven because of it. So what is the text saying? I, I don't get it. I, I know Jesus. I, I read my Bible. I, I try to be a good person. I, I try to do what's right. What are we talking about? The text is trying to tell us that if you want to be promoted, you got to be the light. You got to be like Jesus. You got to do it God's way. You got to shine. You, you can't hide the light. You got to let others see it. You got to duplicate yourself. You got to bring others to Christ. If you don't bring anything to the table, why should God bring more to your table? You can't bring one person to church. Why should God bring blessings to your situation? We can't share the goodness of Jesus on your job. Then why do you expect to go to work and have a good working environment? Most of them don't know the Lord. That's why I tried to convert everyone I see just to get a, just to get a breather every once in a while. If they're bad, try to introduce them Jesus in their lives. People want things added to their life, but they won't add a dollar to the kingdom. People want things healed in their life, but they won't do anything to help somebody else. 
People want all the rewards but won't give anything. But the Bible says if you can just represent the one who you are making the request to, if you can just tell somebody, if you can be a light in the darkness, if you can be a giver of life and to the giver of life, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto me. See, if you want a breakthrough in your life, you got to tell others about Jesus. See, when you do this, you're glorifying God. And in turn, God can bless you. In turn, he can promote you. In turn, he can heal you. In turn, I believe that he will deliver you. You know, I remember years ago, I had my first is what I like to call corporate job. I was still in high school and I was eager to start working, so I applied to work at Allstate Insurance. They had a position open in their customer development unit. And the truth is, the CDU as we called it, is, is really a glorified name for the telemarketing department. I was so happy to get this job. It was a highly coveted job for somebody of my age because they paid you $20 an hour. So I'm gonna tell you today, I was balling at age 17. And so luckily I was hired for the job and however a month into the job the entire floor in the unit of about 50 people were put in a room after we had after I had just started for a month and one of the vice presidents came down and said to us all he said I'm sorry to inform you but we're downsizing the customer development union unit here at Allstate and everybody started whining and complaining and, and tripping out. And then the boss went on to say, we're, but we're going to keep one person on the job. For the next two weeks, whoever gets the most people to sign up for this new, for, for new insurance, they get to stay on and continue on the job with a raise in pay. You know, I was licking my lips. So we had two weeks to do it and I got on the phone and I called as many people as I could and sold as many insurance packages as possible many people hung up on me uh, most of the people hung up on me but the more people I called the more people I called the more people I got to sign up and eventually out of all these people in our unit there was one lone survivor and that was who that was me I got the job over everybody else, not because I was older, not because I was wiser. The reason they kept me was because I showed them that I was ready for the next level. See, I showed them that nobody was going to develop more customers than me. Nobody was going to represent all state better than me. What am I saying today? God can't take you to other levels until you show him that you're ready to be promoted. God can't take you to other levels until you show him that you're ready for the other level. So you ask the question, how do I get promoted? How do I get to my breakthrough? First of all, you got to call on the name of Jesus. It is through his blood that we are reconciled to God. We can't receive breakthroughs. We can't receive promotions. We can't receive healings, deliverances until we first believe in him and call on his name to save us. He's the only way that you can be saved. If you never accepted him as your savior and leader of your life, truly in your heart, I want to tell you, you better do it today. You better do it right now. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How do I get promoted? You get promoted through prayer. Somebody say prayer. We got to stop looking to people to make it happen and start storming the gates of heaven through prayer. Our struggles aren't against flesh and blood. Therefore, humans can't solve what we're going through. And, our, and we wrestle against forces, spiritual forces, way against our human ability. Real deal evil can only be defeated through prayer. Jesus said we should be persistent in our prayers and our Father in heaven will do what? We'll see that we get justice and get it quickly. I don't know who you are today, but you need some justice. And the only way you're going to get justice in your situation is through prayer. Justice in your life doesn't come through unforgiveness. 
doesn't come through foolishness or anger or resentment. Justice comes from turning your problems over to the Lord and leaving them right there with him. Breakthrough comes, comes through giving up the things that are not good for you. Mark 9, 14 through 29, Jesus taught that some spiritual breakthroughs will not happen without prayer and fasting. See, many of us think that fasting is just giving up food just because we gave up a little bit of ham or a little bit of turkey on Thanksgiving. But it's about giving up practices in your life that hinder your progress. You know, some folk are two minutes away from some awesome things happening in their life. They're a few moments away from God delivering them out of their situation. Some folk are just one puff away from good health. Some person is one bottle away from peace in their life. One less purchase away from financial freedom in their life. And one more no to somebody away from God's yes to your life. So giving up things in your life shows God that you're serious. Giving up a few things and a few bad attitudes shows God that you've got a little faith. The Bible says even the smallest amount of faith will do some powerful things like move mountains in your life. Give up always praying for things that you want and start praying for the things that you know that God wants for you. If God can give you better desires, I want to tell you today that you will also receive better results. If we could only give up our impatience and be more patient. Hebrews chapter 6 teaches us that those that have patience inherit what's been promised. Because break breakthroughs only happen to those who realize that it may not come when you want him, but it's always right on time. How many of you know about an on-time God? How many know about a God that's on time? He's never late. He's always, and I mean always, on time. I want you to stand with me today. Just stand with me today at the attention of God. Let's bow our heads in a word of meditation and a word of thanks. Thanking God that breakthroughs are available. Thanking God that we can take the steps. Breakthroughs happen also when we forgive. I sense there's probably one or two people in this place that have not learned to forgive. Jesus said if you're holding on to grudges, offenses, or hating someone, the devil has a foothold on your life. Today I want to tell you, you can release the foothold on your life. I don't know about you, but you don't need to leave this place with any encumbrances. You don't need to leave, the, in, leave this place with a foothold on your life. At the end of the day, the peace of God can be the lead of your life. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's an emotion. It's a choice. So if you want a breakthrough, you've got to make the right choices. And the right choices is to repent. The right choices is to repent. And so at the end of the day, God didn't save our soul. That we could wallow in what we did wrong. God didn't save our soul so that we could live in guilt. If you repent, if we turn away, if we surrender our lives, that's when God can take over and show up and show out. I say today, if there's somebody here that wants to surrender their life to Christ, I wanna offer him to you today. I wanna tell you, you can surrender today. You can get rid of the encumbrance and you can have a breakthrough in your life. I'm just going to ask if there's anybody here who's in need of a breakthrough in their life today.